Hello everyone, it's Joe from Lucas. I'm glad you could join us today. I have an exciting guest today and we're gonna talk about something that is off the charts delicious. I have Allison Park joining us today and she is the founder of Bren. And we're gonna get into what is Bren, okay? It's, it's an incredible, incredible whiskey. So we're gonna to get to that. But first, can you tell us a little bit about Bren? Yeah, hi, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Hi, everyone at Lucas Liquors. Um, so Bren is a, don't get caught in the weeds here, it is a single malt whiskey that's made in the heart of the Cognac region of France, in a nutshell. <laughs> I, I so love that because for all the people that drink single malts, whether American single malt, whether it's from Scotland, doesn't matter where these single malts come from, they're incredible. And we're going to get into those flavors and those tastes. But let, Allison, you, you founded this company. So can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. So um, I know I don't look like your typical whiskey distiller. <laughs> and also I know it's French and I have a very American English accent. Um, so I do, I live in New York City. I am an American. I was a professional ballerina from nine years old to 23. And, uh, and like every good ballerina, you know, I fell in love with whiskey right after. <laughs> <laughs> but what I thought was so interesting, this is the early 2000s, I fell in love with whiskey and I was also doing a lot of reading of wine, right? And in our wine industry, we know all these winemakers talk about terroir, terroir, terroir. And it just means it's why a sommelier can open up a bottle of wine and by smell and taste, tell you what mountain region in France it's from, right? And I thought, that's really cool. <laughs> is anyone doing that in whiskey? If we close our eyes and don't read the packaging just by smell and taste, can you start to tell where in the world a whiskey is made? And when I realized no one was doing it, I went, oh no, I think I need to go do this. <laughs> so I hesitantly entered the whiskey production world. <laughs> that is outstanding. And, and it's, a, it's a great, uh, these whiskeys have so much flavor. Let's just jump into them. Right. And, and then, We'll be able to talk about that and how you produce them. Um, so let, let's let's just we're going to start out with the brim. Yep. So first, let's tell everybody on on what kind of uh, casks are we using and what you know what brings some of the uniqueness to this product because these are unique products. Yeah. Thank you. So the so I I say up front the they're a hundred percent locally made, a hundred percent organic certified. They're 100% unique and 100% approachable, right? They're really friendly. So especially for people who are like, oh, single malts or oh, scotch or oh, whiskey, this is an amazing place to start because it's really, really friendly. Um, what's the, the most important thing about our whiskeys and why they taste so different is these are the first single malts in the world to be aged in new French oak and cognac barrels. And why that might mean anything to someone drinking a whiskey is if you think about what you're tasting, 60 to 70% of the flavor can be attributed to the barrels in which it's aged. And then when you start to really look at the scope of single malts wherever they're made in the world, 98% are aged in ex-bourbon or ex-sherry barrels. So just by changing up the barrels, we're gonna give you something that you can't find in any other brand. I can't wait. I can't wait to dive in. So everybody knows locally produced is not New York. These are all produced <laughs> and they're produced in Cognac, France, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So hundred percent from far from seed to spirit, farm to table, made at this one third generation. It's, it's actually a Cognac house is where I'm doing this. So okay. run by the grandson of the founder. So third generation, they set up in 1920 and they grow all the barley. We have heirloom varietal barley. We use their same strain of yeast that they use for making cognac. We use it to ferment the barley. And then we distill in a cognac still and then get to use their cognac barrels and also these virgin French oak barrels for the maturation. So that is fantastic. All happens there. It's very cool. <laughs> okay, now I'm excited. I want uh, let's, let's at least, let's, uh, let me go to the nose because I know I'm, you're, the, you're the founder. So I, let me see what my nose smells here. All right. <laughs> wow I, you know i get that you get banana for sure and and sweetness it's delicate you know super delicate so right off the nose 
and you can see how far my nose goes in and I have a big nose, so it gets in there. You don't pick up alcohol or nothing. It's just really beautiful and it's soft and it's, and that's not even even drinking it yet. So I get bananas for sure. And what's that sweetness? Almost like a taffy or a, what, what is, tell me what the nose is, okay? In France, um, all of our French consumers say, a la coin, and a la coin is this candy that they all grew up with, right? Okay. And I, and I, I, I also, I get, um, in addition to bananas and that sweetness, I almost, it's, it's funny, sweet in, for Americans can kind of run the spectrum, right? Are you at Skittles or Laffy Taffy or are you at Bananas Foster, right? So I find this to be in the dessert space in the nose, but more complex, right? Like a Bananas Foster, that kind of with that cooked caramel, yes. that vanilla ice cream. That's I, what that is, cooked caramel, <laughs> yes. I get, a, I get creme brulee, and then I also get blueberry muffin tops. I'm very specific on the top, not the, not the doughy middle. <laughs> the, the sugary, caramelized, you know, toasted grain with that cooked blueberry. Okay. Here's my so favorite part. I, I think that's a great description. So this is, this, I believe, you know, just off the nose, for someone entering uh, scotch, single malts, whiskeys, this is going to be a good one. But let's go right into it, okay? Because this is important. Does it hold up on the palate? All right, right. We'll go to me first because mm -hmm. Allison's the expert. Um, you know, it's funny. The, the nose transfers to my palate. Very similar. Soft, really delicate. A long palate, elongated palate is coming down my throat. Um, it, it's truly delicious. All the same flavors. I'm going to repeat myself. Yeah. You know, that banana and I think uh, like creme brulee or that candy. I, I mean, it's, it's just really nice and delicate. That is, uh, that is just delicious. So now let's hear from the expert. <laughs> well, no, I was gonna say, you said something before, before the cameras were rolling that I think is really important and, and helpful for people to know, right? Typically, if people are doing a whiskey tasting or something and you try a whiskey that has, that is really full in the light flavors, right? And that's what we're talking about. If you have a flavor spectrum, right? The heavy peated iodine band-aid flavors are on one side, Bren is all the way on the other side right? And then on the y-axis, you have the intensity level. And where peated scotches are really intense in those heavy notes, a steak cask is also really intense and really intense in all the light notes. And what you had said before we started was, it's kind of amazing how this, like, when, when you sip it, the, the light notes don't dissipate quickly, which is typically, I think, what people experience in a lighter whiskey. You are so spot on. And we talk about it a lot with our customers that when I drink something light with a long palate, it's yeah. far and few between. So yeah. this is this holds on in your mouth. It's got some grip to it, but it's light. It's very delicious. Don't need to put anything in it. Uh, actually, I could drink this in the summer because it's so soft. Definitely. Yeah. And, and that's also the other thing. This is like exactly to your point. You don't need to put anything in it. And it's a really fun whiskey to play with in cocktails. Right in your classic cocktails, in tiki cocktails, it works really well with tiki cocktails. Really? Yeah, hot toddies, old fashions. It's a, it's, it shocked me because in the beginning I was such, I was like coming in with like you know the ballerina kind of stick up my you know where, and I was very purist about everything. And the psychologist kept saying, no, no, but try it in a sidecar, try it in a sazerac, try it in an old fashioned, and you. It's really opened my mind to single malts in cocktails. I, I love this on its own, on ice, or in a cocktail. It's really fun. Well, I, I have to, I totally agree with you. Um, I hope you have a few minutes and, and we'll, we'll take a short break and we'll come back and we'll talk about Bren 10. Um, but I will tell everybody, man, this is one, I can't wait till the tasting counters are open. We have to get this one back out there. It's super delicious. I know we're coming up on scotch days coming soon. Um, this is a great summer scotch. It's, it's a, I shouldn't call it scotch. So I'm, again, I'm not the professional. <laughs> uh, I, I, you didn't call me out on that one, but it's a single malt. 
Um, but it's got the depth of a scotch. It truly has the depth of a scotch. And I think that's the one thing we should take away from this is that long palate. And it's aged how many years, this one? Yeah, the estate cask is aged between six and eight, which okay. in the region of Cognac is basically equivalent climatically to like a 10 to 12 in Scotland. Perfect. Well, I tell you what, thank you very much. This is, this is very, very good. And I can't wait to have it back on my tasting counter. You, you, you have a, a fabulous product here. Thank you. So I will, we'll, we'll talk again shortly. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Joe. <laughs>